Hi, my name is Laurie. I'm a solo developer, and this is the game that I'm working on. Uh, so it's basically Star Wars Pod Racer in VR, um, and I've been working on it for one month. At the beginning of the year, I um, cut my hours at work, so I have uh, one full day uh, on a Friday for game development. Um, so while I say that I've been working on this for a month, um, it's more like uh, about eight days plus some evenings, because you know I get half of my Saturday, half my Sunday, a full day Friday, other than then a few hours here and there that I can squeeze in in the rest of the week. Um, so I think. Overall, I'm certainly pleased with the progress um, for you know probably what is about 100 hours worth of work. Um, in that time, I've made uh, the sort of physics for uh, these ships. Obviously, Unity comes with um, its own physics engine out of the box, but it's not really suitable for like sci-fi hovercraft uh, in this this sort of style. So, I'm creating my own physics for the game. The main thing I wanted to achieve was this feeling of floating on like a pocket of air while being pulled forward by these two engines. Um, so to do that, um, I had to make a lot of tweaks to the gravity. Um, so when you're close to the ground, uh, we apply like a large upwards force and that's proportional to how close you are to the ground. We also cast rays uh, left and right of the player's position as well as forward and back. And uh, we do that to sort of measure the angle of the surface beneath the player. And then we adjust the pitch and the roll. Uh, and that's to give it a realistic feeling of being sort of suspended um, by these sort of engines in front. Uh, whereas in actual programming terms, uh, the two engines in front are, um, they're only animated. They don't actually have any physics for themselves. And, um, it's entirely done by sort of altering their local position relative to the camera. One of the other things I do to um, kind of create nice physics is uh, I calculate the dot product between the player's velocity and their forward uh, facing vector. So for anyone who's not familiar with vector maths, um, first of all, a vector is um, like a list of numbers. Uh, so here we're talking about a vector three, which is um, it can be like the player's position or it can also represent velocity or directions and things like that. So uh, a vector will have a magnitude, which is the sum of the values. Um, so if we look in the bottom left hand corner, we can see the speed readout. That is just the magnitude of the velocity. So what you can do is if you normalize the velocity, um, you're sort of converting it into just a direction. So if you take the dot product of that value, uh, that will return a number between one and negative one based on how closely aligned they are. So a number like 0 0.9 would mean that they're closely aligned and in that situation, we would conserve a lot of their velocity and redirect it towards the new direction that they're facing. Whereas a number like zero means that the player is facing 90 degrees away from their velocity. And in that situation, we wouldn't really expect the aircraft to be able to um, sort of redirect uh, a lot of the energy, you know, because it's um, not really going against the aerofoils in the way uh, that the ship would be designed for. Combining this redirect value along with the acceleration and the dampen on the velocity um, can kind of greatly change the handling of it. Um, so if we want a ship that uh, is much better at drifting around corners, then we would probably put a lower dampen on the velocity and a lower redirect amount. We also have air brakes for taking sharp corners. Um, so the air brakes will increase the rate at which the aircraft turns uh, in in rotational terms. Um, so let's say you use the left air brake, maybe previously turning left would have only done, you know, two degrees a second. Using the air brake, it might do three or four. Along with a sort of increase in rotation speed, it also will strafe the aircraft, uh, left or right. And thirdly, it also comes at a sort of velocity cost. Altogether, that gives us uh, a huge number of options for um, creating different feels for different aircraft. Okay, so that's physics out of the way. I appreciate that was quite lengthy, um, but hopefully people will find value in uh, knowing in depth how one goes about creating your own aircraft physics.
So one of the challenges I have with creating a very fast paced game is um, I need to sell the sense of speed to the player. You can see a lot of the map is outdoors, it's very large scale. So with the sound design, um, while all the sound effects are totally placeholder, um, and they're also quite few and far between. I have been playing around with Doppler shift effects. So as we race towards the sort of construction site, we can hear a pitch up and pitch down as we sort of race past it. And I think that kind of helps sell the idea that we're traveling at a huge speed. As for the art assets, uh, you might recognize them because uh, they're the low poly um, art packs by Sinti Studios uh, and you see loads of indie game developers are using them. It is kind of a negative that we, you know, we don't have a, a unique visual identity um, because there are loads of other games using the same art asset packs. On the bright side, most people who use them never seem to finish their games. So as for released games to the public, there are very few that I know of uh, that use these art asset packs. I imagine I'll get some backlash among people's uh, first impressions, assuming it's uh, just another sort of lazy asset flip. But still, that's kind of preferable to me spending years uh, making my own art assets. Um, but also it's nice that the game um, is very close to a sort of cake slice already. Uh, so if anyone's not familiar with the term cake slices, a complete game is a full cake. A cake slice is, you know, I've got one level with roughly final art assets, roughly final sounds, roughly final code. Prior to this, I was working on a turn-based tactics game uh, that was similar to um, sort of Battle Brothers in art style, um, which is sort of 2D illustrations for everything, very low on actual animations, cheap to produce. One of the things I disliked about that project was that I had to go and commission all the artwork kind of immediately if I wanted to do any early marketing because players really won't accept looking at uh, placeholder art assets. It's very difficult for other people to really imagine where you're going with a game without being able to see it. Uh, yeah, and that, I think that pretty much covers everything I've done in the first month and why I did it. Um, so you probably noticed there are no uh, AI players. That's a missing feature. That's something that I'll be working on soon. I also don't have any menus, uh, nor do I have any combat. Combat I might leave and as the very last thing because it will be like a working MVP without it. Yeah, and that's it. Stay tuned. Uh, I'll post another one in a month, show you how far I get in month number two. Oh, uh, and if anyone has any suggestions on what to call this game, leave me a comment. Thanks.